This is going to be your guide to getting Riolu and Lucario in Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl, as well as a moveset, that way you can use them once you get them. So this is going to be how you get to Iron Island. You go to Candlelave City, you talk to this dude, boat takes you there, GG easy. Now let's go and find Riley, because we need to help him out to get that Riolu egg. So when you first enter the cave, you want to go down these stairs on the right, then you want to go through this room, and then you just kind of hug the right side, and then you take this little escalator down, and then you go to the left, and then Riley's there. So now you just need to do the whole double bell thing like you did with Cheryl. You've already done that at this point in the story. Go to the end, then you get the real Lu egg. One thing you need to do is make sure you have enough room in your party to accept the egg from Riley, but the cool thing is, we are now playing in modern Pokemon, so don't forget, you can go straight to your boxes to deposit Pokemon, that way you can claim your egg. And now we're egg hatching like it's 2007, so there's a couple things you can do, Flame Body Pokemon does speed up the hatch rate of eggs, it's not needed until like you're fully all in on breeding, if you just want to get real really quick, you can do this for a couple of minutes, or you can also just walk around and play the rest of the game. Game. Get the national decks or complete the Sinnoh decks, get the national decks, run around the region, and then eventually it'll just hatch. It, it's an egg. There's nothing crazy about it. And once your egg hatches into a Riolu, you start to have the fun of building friendship with your Pokemon. And one thing that helps with that is the Friendship Checker app for your Poketch. So if you go to Eterna City in the Pokemon Center, this lady gives you one, and what it does is it shows how happy all of your Pokemon are. So by clicking on a Pokemon, you can see how happy it is, judging by how many hearts and how large the hearts are. So let's head on over to Bulbapedia to make sense of all of this. So the Generation 4 methods are pretty much the same. Now here's where things get a little interesting. So if you have a massage at the Ribbon Syndicate, then that can gain some friendship for your Pokemon. But the Ribbon Syndicate, kind of annoying. These guys are blocking my path. I already went to the battle tower, but I guess I didn't win enough or something. Or maybe it is locked out by the national decks, which I don't have because I got locked out by Drifloon as well. But once you get there, you also need to have 10 different kinds of ribbons spread among your current party. Uh, I guess that's going to be easier with transfer. There's a lot of different ways of getting ribbons inside the game. Like there's the uh, daily ribbons that you get in Sunny Shore City and a few others that you can find like also becoming champion and stuff. So yeah, the ribbon syndicate, pretty snobby. But once you get there, you can get a massage and that is going to be a way of getting some friendship. But mostly it's going to be friendship raising berries, which are Pomeg, Kelpsy, Qualot, Hondu, Greppa, and Tomato berries. What also really helps is that if you have a Riolu that has good IVs or you want to make competitive, then you give it vitamins. Vitamins are going to be pretty good for that. Battle items don't really matter because the battle items are only plus one, uh, but using vitamins, that's plus five, three, and then two. However, good thing about this game is that you are not capped on vitamins. You can go 26 vitamins to max out a stat, so that's going to be a good way of getting a Pokemon's friendship as you need it. Getting the first Riolu to a Lucario so you can start breeding though might not make it worth it to use valuable berries or vitamins on. So I mean there's always leveling up, which does pretty good, and then walking 128 steps. So yeah, it's kind of annoying, it's kind of a thing. And then we can also see how the friendship checker works. Two large hearts equals max friendship at 255 points. Riolu needs 220 points to evolve into Lucario and you need to level it up during the daytime to get the evolution so somewhere between two small hearts and two large hearts if you have two small hearts and you level it up and it doesn't evolve that means you're close and just walking a bit more will get you that lucario so yeah that's your quick little friendship guide and riolu lucario guide let's check out some movesets so Lucario is going to look a little spicy right now as everyone's getting all the information compiled and then published correctly because we have the data mine. Data mine shows us TMs as well as the learn set. The egg moves look a little weird, but we can kind of cross-reference some of the important ones. Bullet Punch, that's going to be ID number 418, and we can see right here that ID number 418 is on the Riolu. But this is modern Pokemon, so the Bullet Punch doesn't really seem like it's going to be super necessary. And that brings us to Pokemon Showdown, where we're going to examine the moveset. So this is your sweepy Lucario shenanigans. It's a different game, and I'm actually not sure how weird that's going to make things, because fairy types exist, which means Lucario has now turned the tables on Togekiss. And the idea being, you go steadfast. 
All you have to do is tank an air slash. You flinch. Oh, never mind. Speed is up by one stage. You outspeed Scarf Kiss, and they just blow it up on a Meteor Mash. We have Life Orb, so you just keep that damage coming. And then there's also Swords Dance. So even if you're not like some kind of weird flinch matchup you're trying to set up against, you Swords Dance on Lucario when you f find the opportunity. Even not, you have a 110 attack, Life Orb, and some very high base power moves. Close Combat, 120 Stab, Extreme Speed, 80. That's actually more than Stab Bullet Punch, which is why we're not really considering the Bullet Punch too much. Like, weird ghost scenarios, sure. Like, if Frost Lass with Focus Sash becomes too much of a problem, then you might be kicking yourself wishing that you had the Bullet Punch. But until that happens, Extreme Speed is going to be just fine. Also, easier to get because that is going to be a part of the level up on Lucario. So we can see that right here. Extreme Speed, Close Combat, Meteor Mash, Swords Dance. Crunch is going to be an egg move, but this is just a very level up friendly Lucario. So yeah, you do that and then you find some opportunities. Things are pretty crazy. The inner focus also pretty good, but there's really no point when like steadfast you survive anyways. Now you're at plus one. Now you're out speeding. So it's kind of like you just tank the hit on inner focus anyways and ignored it. So really just the steadfast is going to put you ahead and just be the best case scenario for the Lucario. And yeah, you just find those opportunities and you are just an absolute beast of a wall breaking Pokemon. You can also run the Choice Scarf. Choice Scarf is mostly going to be looking for coverage and fun stuff like that. However, this is not Platinum. We don't have the Move Tutors. So no Elemental Punches for the Lucario. And I believe it loses a few other things. So it's not like, oh man, Thunder Punch the Gyarados. Ice Punch the Gliscor. Don't have that these days. So Lucario... The game giveth and the game taketh away. We're going to see where Lucario lands. That's why I'm like, ah, just splash in Earthquake. Gengar doesn't have Levitate. Game's weird right now. Poison-type Pokemon might be problematic, and there's no Ferrothorn, so it's not like we need a random Fire-type move or something. I don't know, but I guess with this, then that's when you want the inner focus. There's no, like, fake-out shenanigans, and you don't really care about more speed when you are a plus-one Lucario off that Choice Scarf. You effectively just run it down with Close Combat or Meteor Mash, depending on the opponent's remaining Pokemon and the health of said Pokemon, and then you just kind of go until you go down. Now, after, like, minus one on Close Combat, Kara's not really surviving much, and after minus two, it should already be KO'd, so there we go. Uh, you do want the Jolly Nature, even though it, like, feels good. You want that Adamant, you want to get as much damage as possible on the plus one Lucario, but Gyarados outspeeds you at plus one. Dragonite, outspeed you at plus one. Also, depending on, like, neutral scenarios and whatnot, like, let's just say it's Dragonite that's Jolly versus an Adamant Lucario before you even get any speed, 279, 284. You lose. Well, you kind of lose anyways because there's no Ice Punch, but you don't want the game to come down to, like, a one-third health Dragonite that you don't outspeed and just easily take the game on. So there could be some weird stuff. And then Gyarados, same thing. It just has one more base speed, so you outspeed it with the Jolly. You get outsped with the Adamant. Don't let that happen. Uh, because of no tutor moves, special Lucario, kind of a thing. I've never been, been a big fan of it, even when, like, Mega Lucario was running around, the whole mixed idea. That didn't really appeal to me too much, but it's kind of the same idea as this. You go Nasty Plot, maybe you're just faster than everything, really good cleanup sweeper if you already kind of, like, remove super speedy, scary threats from, th from the opponent, or if they have a Togekiss and they just kind of go Air Slash instead of Flamethrower, or if they're already locked into Air Slash. Togekiss, Scarf Kiss is taken off, they KO one of your Pokemon, bring in Lucario as the response. You know what's going to happen, they either switch out and you get a Nasty Plot, or they flinch you, you get a speed, and then you can like Nasty Plot and Flash Cannon and do stuff. It depends on health though, like you probably can't eat the two second Air Slash as a Lucario, but at least you're plus one and then you have Life Orb damage on the Flash Cannon, looking pretty scary. Stab on the Aura Sphere, can't miss, that feels pretty good too. Then Dragon Pulse from the for the coverage. I don't know. Game's weird. Plus one, you have the Steadfast. Garchomp comes in. It's not a Scarf Chomp. Dragon Pulse. Also, as we talked about, we're, we just beat out Dragonite. So if it's not plus one or if it does get plus one and you get plus one or something weird happens, then you also have super effective coverage. Dragon Pokemon are around. They are a thing. So you can just kind of coverage out with that. And yeah, same ideas. You kind of can't risk not 
being a speed benefiting nature and then we also have the idea behind a wall breaking lucario or some kind of just bait out the counter lucario this is where you can get away with the attack again it's different play styles different ideas this is kind of like the slightly more sweepy than some of the other pseudo sweepers because we're gen 4 decks we don't have any kind of crazy speed creep 100 is pretty ideal but you start finding a lot of messes around like 80 and 90 and stuff and lucario does things but with this like okay you take a hit you either destroy them because you are an adamant close combat lucario and then you follow it up on the extreme speed you also fish for super effective hits you trade on focus sashes or just straight up who cares i'm gonna bait out this hit from like i'm baiting out the earthquake from garchomp i'm surviving counter garchomp's dead once again, Steadfast is kind of neat, but we want the inner focus, that way we don't just get faked out, our focus ash is broken, then we lose the game, so we can still, like, tank hits, get value out of our item effectively, kind of maybe trying to be there, and then we still close combat extreme speed. If we're just faster, that's great. Close combat, tank a hit, close combat. If we're still faster, close combat again! I don't care! Get at me! I'm going pl one plus on this Pokemon. If not, extreme speed, still one plus for a little bit of damage on top. And those are the ideas behind Lucario. Um, some weird stuff on the semi-restricted moveset, Scarf Final Gambit Lucario. We also have, you know, the shenanigans that have been around. Reversal. A cool thing that Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl did is you might notice that these are pre-evolution moves for some of them. Well, yeah, you don't need to worry about, like, making, like, learning these on Riolu. You just can move relearn to them at any time. So, Reversal, Final Gambit, kind of cute. Copycat. Maybe there's some shenanigans there. Power Up Punch. That's, that's the never happening cheese, but could be kind of interesting. Actually, I was thinking about this from the Generation 4 mindset, which is going to be hard to break, and maybe you're going to struggle with, like, some old, outdated movesets, but you want the reversal here, because reversal at one health is 200 base power, and you got Meteor Mash now. I don't remember when Lucario got this, Gen 6, like, Oras, or maybe Gen 7 or something? So, like, you can Meteor Mash. It doesn't have to be a close combat, and maybe you find the plus one, which is also kind of nutty, but you get that damage, Focus Sash kicks off, and then you have 200 base power reversals coming in. Um, that's maybe why we go back to Steadfast as well. Because we eat the flinch or something. And if it was an overkill, Focus Ash keeps us alive. If not, we're still going to be... I don't, actually, I don't know. Because like you eat, the, you eat an Air Slash from Togekiss. That's like 60-70% maybe. And then reversal isn't going to be as crazy. But you still get the plus one out of it. And then you're kind of crazy. Uh, Meteor Mash, also plus one attack potential so i mean a little bit of rng some shenanigans going on or you just straight counter reversal and that's also a pretty cracked lucario moveset right there and you just have more options so lucario could still be pretty strong but you need to play it with a very specific team composition this isn't going to be your sweeper it might not be the best choice scarf option as well so you need to really make it to where you have like bulkier pokemon or just other hyper sweepers to take out the, your opponent's fastest Pokemon. Maybe you got that Dragonite for the Dra Dragon Dance. Maybe you're trying to set up Gyarados for the Dragon Dance. Gyarados gets the Ice Fang because then Gyarados is now like the anti-Dragonite, potentially weird Garchomp matchup Pokemon. So it's like, okay, Gyarados sweeps the opponent's fastest Pokemon. Gyarados eventually goes down to some shenanigans or something. And if you just get your opponent in the position where all of their Pokemon are less than 90 base speed, you don't have to worry about steadfast shenanigans. You just win the game. If it's special, Focus Sash, Reversal, or just Life Orb, you don't even need a Swords Dance in some situations. You don't want Reversal here, you still want the close combat. But I mean, um, yeah, Lucario might be looking nasty, and there's a lot of different flavors to be picking right now. So I hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you all have a nice day. Thank you very much for watching.